Hey everybody, let's talk about making a type face. In other words, let's use type as a way to create a portrait. So what we're gonna do is look at some different possibilities and how this might work in Adobe Illustrator. Now here are some examples of some posters I found dedicated to Star Wars, where the designer uh, used specific letters arranged in specific ways to create uh, the shape and style of the face. And I think this was a fun typographic design that they created where just by using a few letters in strategic places, those letters kind of break down. They're no longer uh, representing letter shapes, but they've become little marks, little elements of design that uh, are put together in a strategic way uh, to make the portrait. And so there are a few different methods for this that we can look at and I'm gonna talk about them now. One would be kind of this collage method where you would arrange letters in strategic ways to mimic features of a face. And then another would be like this Darth Vader picture where you have letters that kind of distort into the shapes that create the silhouette of the face, whether it's uh, strategically placing words in, into shadow shape areas and then letting the white of the background become the bright spot um, another interesting thing about this particular design is they actually used words from uh, probably it looks to me like quotes from Darth Vader himself and uh, built them into the shape of the face. So here I've got a little portrait of Princess Leia and we can look at how we might do both methods, the collage method or maybe the, uh, the distorted method. So let's look at the collage first. And the way it works is, the way I like to work, is basically pick an alphabet. And in this case, I just happen to pick um, this typeface. And uh, I typed out the, all the letters of the alphabet, the numbers, the symbols, everything uh, on my page. And then I converted them all into outlines. So basically, I use the type tool, I tap on my page, and then I type out you know, different letters from the alphabet. Let me enlarge that so it's more obvious. And then at that point, what I do is I go to the type menu and I use create outlines. Create outlines takes your letter shapes and converts them into permanent vector shapes. So they're no longer attached to the type tool or a line of type. See how it outlined those, those letters? Um, since I typed them all out in a row, I'll have to do ungroup. And then what I can do with the selection arrow is grab each one individually. And so again, what I would do is create a whole page of capital, lowercase letters, symbols, shapes, numbers, everything that uh, comes with the alphabet, I would type up. And then I would start picking specific letters for specific features on the face. You can kind of see over here where I started doing that. Um, yes, and uh, also to make sure that your page is set up properly in Illustrator, what you want to do is use the layer palette and you want to make sure that your image, whatever image you're going to trace is on the bottom layer and that you lock it. Make sure that it has a lock on it so that you don't accidentally disturb it. And then you create a new layer above it to arrange all of your letters and start collaging the face. So let's do this. I'm gonna grab these pieces, which I have kind of prepared over here on the side. And I've got a parentheses, a quotation mark, and an O, which I used to start building the I. I think part of the challenge of doing this kind of a tight face is to try not to distort the letters. As best you can, try to leave them alone. You can scale them, of course, and reposition them and they can overlap uh, and you can do multiple copies even if you need to, overlapping them one over the top of the other. But what I don't want you to do is stretch them really weird. Um, I think, again, it's more of a challenge if you figure out how to use them in their regular size, not their regular size, but their proportionate size and you figure out how to collage them to build your portrait. Um, 
Certainly you can use certain things like lines and little segments of shapes like pieces of uh, percentage mark or a slash or a hashtag or whatever in different areas to build different pieces. Um, but look for commonalities. Look for uh, letters that actually look like the contour or the shape. So maybe the J might fit there on the crook of her nose. Maybe, maybe I can get away with another parentheses to try to build up the end of her nose. Again, you can scale them, but try to scale them proportionally so that they're not um, distorted or stretched. And one by one, you start to build up these little pieces and build out the face. Maybe I don't like that. Actually, I think I want to try the quotation mark here. See how that looks. And you slowly but surely start to build it up. And over time, after you build up enough letters, your face will start to take shape. And you'll start to see it come together. Um, kind of making randomized clusters of letters is okay if you're trying to build up dark areas or shadow areas. Wherever you see in your photograph dark uh, shadows, you can certainly put a cluster of letters, even to the point where you can't read what they are. It uh, doesn't matter if you can really read the letters. Again, the challenge is just trying to make the, uh, the face with the letters and spending your time kind of collaging them and figuring out the best way to get them uh, to work together. You can see how those pieces kind of build up over time. And, you know, some letters may be used more than others. But again, do what you can to try to use, use them all. All right, so I think you get the idea. Again, the key to this method is starting with an alphabet, um, typing it out, capital, lowercase, numbers, symbols, type them all out, and then using the type menu, create to outlines so you can convert them into vector shapes and then start using your selection tools and moving them around and trying to collage them on top of the face to make the portrait. Okay, so that's one method, just basic letter collage, I call it. Now let's try another method. This is one similar to that Darth Vader picture I had showed you a little bit earlier, where what you have is an image where words are actually used to build up the portrait. But look at this, how uh, those words are kind of distorted and twisted and kind of contour to the shape that's created on um, the portrait. Well, that has to be done with something called envelope. It's a, it's a little feature in Illustrator you can use to wrap, uh, uh, wrap things into other objects. So, the way you want to think about it is you need to spend time first drawing contour shapes on the face and figuring out where the main planes are of a face. For example, these, these uh, red, orange, and yellow shapes are kind of contoured onto the side of her hair. And if I was going to get into the detail here, I'd want to create a contour shape maybe for her cheekbone, especially for the shadow areas. Imagine that these white areas will remain white. They'll just be uh, the paper showing through. But anywhere you see something dark is where you can put uh, a darker word shape. And maybe even to define the edge of her face, I would put some shapes here on the side of her face. So let me do that. I'm gonna draw a couple more shapes just to kind of represent these shape areas. I'm going to do them different colors so it's obvious how they're different. So I'll do these two kind of representing the outside area, the background area. And then I might do another one here 
kind of representing the, the cheek. And it's going to kind of be next to that one that was part of her hair. Okay, now this is what happens. Once you have some of these contour shapes in place, and um, as you're drawing your contour shapes, keep in mind that this technique works best when you have rectangular rounded shapes. Avoid shapes, you know, that are really pointy and have really weird um, ins and outs and strange extra shapes like that. And I'll show you what happens. So you want to confine yourself to rounded, rectangular, bean-like shapes even that try to follow the underlying contour you find in the photograph. Then what you do is you start typing out words. And I suggest keeping, keep, keeping it to one word at a time. Don't try to fit an entire phrase or, or a sentence into this. What we want to do is build up a few words. And then when I take this word, I'm going to make a copy and bring it over here. And what I'm going to do is make sure that it's placed underneath the red shape. And what I do is I hold my selection tool and I select the word and the first red shape. So those two items are selected. Now I go to the object menu and I use envelope distort and I use make with top object. So what's going to happen is the word Leia is going to be wrapped inside that red shape. And here's the thing. It's a little bit unpredictable what it does when it drops the word into the shape. Um, and it can go kind of wonky on you and you can't entirely control what happens. Just keep in mind that the direction of the anchor points, the number of anchor points on your shape, the distorted nature of the shape changes how it works. Let's see what happens on um, this other red shape I, I've drawn over here and see what happens when I put the word organa under this really weird angular shape. Again, object, envelope, distort, make with top object. You see what happened there? Because that shape had all these different angles and turns and twists on it, uh, it just blew that word apart. So you really got to simplify your shapes, make sure that they have, um, they don't have any twists or deep angles on them. That way words will remain legible. See how it's starting to come back as I mess around with it here. So just pay attention to that as you're building your shape. The simpler the shape, the more rounded the shape and less angular the shape. Let's see if I can remove a few of these anchor points. See that handlebar right there is the one that's causing a lot of damage. Yeah. So you have to kind of untangle those, those shapes a little bit. So you have to be strategic when you build these silhouette shapes, avoid really pinch points and uh, you'll see what happens. Let's try another one over here. I'm going to try Leia. Also, you want to kind of match the length of the word with the, uh, the area. So let's try Leia under this green shape here and see what happens. So it kind of crams it in there. So if it's a really long word, it's going to condense it down really short. You won't be able to read it anymore. And so I think the fun of this kind of a portrait is, is that it's still kind of legible. So the more time you spend drawing these silhouette color shapes and really strategically planning the size and scale of the type of word that's going to go in there, the better result you're going to get. If you're just kind of random and you slap it down and you don't really pay attention to the contour or the size of the word or the size of the space, it's not going to look very good. So when in doubt, use a smaller shape, use a smaller word, avoid angles as best you can. And you'll start getting uh, this kind of a, a design. Now, there's nothing stopping you after doing this from doing further manual manipulation. So let's say, I've got this little shape area. I like it. There's not much more I can do with it in the envelope form. So what I'm going to do is expand it. 
which would actually convert those letters into vector shapes in their distorted version. And say yes, expand object and fill. So now I could go in with my direct selection arrow and further manipulate those letters manually after doing the envelope warp. So if I have to fix something or adjust something, I can do that manually by using expand under the object menu. And that's true for any kind of distortion or appearance effect in Illustrator is when you uh, do the effect, it's adjustable, it's editable, but then when you wanna convert it back to a vector shape where you can have you know, pinpoint control with the pen tool or the direct selection arrow, you gotta go to object and expand. All right, so that's the trick. You can try either the collage method where you're, you know, just using letters and collaging them together to trace and make a face. Or you can try the envelope method where you draw the silhouette shadows first and then start putting in words and phrases uh, into the portrait. All right, so hopefully that gave you some ideas. I'd love to see your work. See you next time.